Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Bibliophiles. Today I'm going to be talking about The Martian War by Kevin J. Anderson. Yeah, it says Gabriel Mesta, but it was made by Kevin J. Anderson. He was using a pseudonym for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I tried looking it up, but I couldn't find anything. It even it's, it even says that it was... He even admits that he was using a pseudonym in the front flap of the book. But, um, anyway. <clears throat> this is essentially a... Uh, sort of his take on the whole War of the Worlds thing, except in this one, um, H.G. Wells himself is actually the main protagonist instead of just the nameless uh, narrator that was in the War of the Worlds. <coughs> and um, he and a few other scientists um, go actually go to Mars, and, um, well, first they go to the moon, then they go to Mars after... Like, they go to the moon, they meet these uh, moon people called Selenites, and then they go to Mars where they, you know, try and stop this impending Martian invasion. And, um, you know, um, it was just a lot of fun. <clears throat> Essentially, um, in my opinion, I think it was more of like a love letter to the early um, sci-fi of the late 18 and early 1900s such as uh, going from like the earth to the moon by means of this uh, weird this uh, shell it's called a cavorite spear cavorite spear it's made as some sort of this weird material anyway um, <clears throat> um see um uh, also during the um, reading during the story they go repeatedly back and forth to uh, this journal of Dr. Moreau. Yes, that Dr. Moreau, where he uh, goes and um, where he's where, where we talk about the first encounter with the Martians and um, you know, where he talks about like how he dissects a few of them and uh, actually uh, um, grafts human organs to one of them so they can you know, live and so forth, and you know how all that whole thing turns out, and how they discover that the Martians were trying to invade, and why they're trying to, you know, go and, um, you know, prevent the invasion. And um, for the most part, I thought it was a very fun, fantastical type of uh, thing, you know, because, um, like I said, there's so many different stuff, like going to the moon then going to Mars, fighting the Martians. Now, there's some stuff that kind of bugged me, um, but some that didn't. Uh, first off was the whole um, <clears throat> saying that it I just heard somebody, people saying that it was kind of a knocking off the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen Volume 2, but I kind of, because, I mean, I, I kind of dis kind of agree because of the another character that just makes an appearance is Holly Griffin, the um, Invisible Man, and um, the, he didn't have a first name in the book. It was just Griffin, and it really wasn't until um, Alan Moore gave him the name in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen that he actually had a first name, <clears throat> and. Um, but that really didn't bug me. And there's also the certain um, thing that kind of goes against what they were, what, what H.G. Wells was going off in the in the uh, book, which was the whole um, that uh, the the whole point between the Martians and the humans was that it was supposed to parallel the relationship between humans and animals, and <clears throat> how. Um, how kind of cold we are to animals and how easily it is for us to just casually kill off lo a lot of them and um, but mostly um, like yeah there's a few side few uh, couple of victories with such as with the thunder child and taking out a couple of the Martian tripods for the most part the humans were completely helpless and um, and 
you know, we're just constantly getting killed by them, and but also to display sort of a irony that despite all of the advances and technology and you know all the the things that we've accomplished, that it was microbes that destroyed and took out the Martians. <clears throat> But, you know, th th these things didn't really bother me that much because, um, you know, they, j they just didn't really bug me that much. Anyway, um, <clears throat> um, st some stuff that did kind of bug me was, um, <clears throat> like, um, how, uh, like, they, they really, I kind of felt they really underused the, um, the character of Griffin because he he's not there for that long and not long, he kind of tries to blow up the lab because I think he was a spy for Germany <clears throat> or something. And, um, and on the other, on the one hand, this is kind of funny because it, um, it's this large explosion that he attempts to blow up the lab, which sends the Cavorite sphere with H.G., Thomas Huxley, and Jane off to the moon into outer space when the, the, within the Cavorite sphere. And, um, but I still kind of feel it's sort of underused. N another thing that kind of bugged me a little bit was, um, when they were, um, going to the, going to Mars and they were going to free the <clears throat> Selenites who were become slaves to the Martians. And I thought that kind of went a little f too fast, you know, like they show off this weird little medallion thing and and then suddenly uh, you know just several of them are not only being it or not only rebelling but also rebelling with remarkable coordination but um, I mean yeah they explain it but it's why they act like they all have a single mind and why they're all coordinated but it still kind of bugs me uh, but still overall it was a very enjoyable and fun novel that I had a lot of fun reading, um, you know, in total I'd give it four out of five. It was just a lot of fun, um, in my personal opinion, like I said, it feels like a big love letter to the old school sci-fi of the late 18 and early 1900s, like H.G. Wells and um, Jules Verne and so forth, and it's just a lot of fun. We have the nice, the nice fantastical, all of its fantastical elements and all of the different stuff that happens. Anyway, um, in total, in a, uh, like I said, uh, just a good, great book, hi highly recommended. Anyway, um, till next time, I'm your host, signing out. See you later.